Thank you for joining us for this webinar on digital marketing strategies. Uh, may I remind you to kindly switch off your audio and uh, picture so that we'll be able not to have uh, interruptions with the picture or with uh, background sound. My name is Josh Kimbri, I'm Chief Officer for Trade Malta. We are bringing you these, this series of webinars together with our uh, strategic partners, HSBC. For the first two webinars, one on artificial intelligence and the other one on effective networking, we had over 100 participants following us live, apart from the many others who uh, followed the webinars on our website, www.trademalta.org. So the webinars are being received very well. Uh, thanks for this. Thanks to our team at Trade Malta, Studio 7 who are supporting us, the various speakers we're getting every week, uh, and of course our strategic partners, HSBC. Next week we have an interesting session um, with a lot of stakeholders from the sub-Saharan African country in Namibia. Um, uh, we will have people from London and people from Namibia uh, joining us, so we're looking forward to that as well. And then the last webinar before we break off for the summer recess will be um, with an expert based in London of HSBC on trade finance options and the future of supply chains. I'd like to take a minute to explain the latest assistance scheme, assistance scheme that we have at Trade Malta. It's a scheme we came up with to assist companies affected by the COVID crisis. Essentially, we will be providing two eligible companies involved in eligible activities a 50% refund on the expenses they, they do on two fronts, either when they execute digital marketing strategies, when they're doing online advertising to build brand, etc., or and and when they uh, use uh, when they invest in doing online digital marketing training for their stuff. So if you're doing any of these activities in these moments when perhaps it's difficult to travel and therefore you are switching your investment in lead generation and marketing towards digital, please get in touch with us or visit trademalta.org. Before I introduce the speaker we have today, I'd like to remind you uh, to send questions via the, the chat function of Microsoft Teams. What we will be doing is take questions throughout the session, but I will be reading the questions to our speaker at the end of the main presentation. Please do send questions because it will make the discussion after the main presentation more focused on your needs. Today we have a very interesting and practical session on digital marketing strategies. We hope to demystify the idea of digital uh, marketing and try to discuss how companies in practice involved in any sector and of any size can use these new tools and new, tech and new technologies to reach out to international clients. To do this with us today and with me here in the studio is Matthew Sammut from uh, Ice Malta. Matthew, thanks first of all for finding time uh, to be with us today. I'd like to start with a bit of a question on you, your background and why you think uh, digital marketing is becoming so important in, for a company you know, interested in doing internationalization. Uh, thank you, Joe. Thank you, Trade Malta, for organizing these, these webinars. Um, yes, I mean, digital marketing actually is important for any business. Um, it's important basically even how the things are changing and evolving um, at the moment and in the past years actually. For internationalization, it's, it's, it's extremely important um, because it gives you quicker access to markets. So, so technically, using digital as opposed to the traditional marketing um, will, will help you get there quicker. Um, so, yeah. That's it. Matt, I'm sure we're in for a very interesting um, debate. I'm going to give you the floor for about 45 minutes of uh, the actual presentation. I remind the participants, apart from switching off your audio and picture, which you're doing, and thanks for that, um, we'll be back with questions following the main presentation by Matthew. Uh, I will be reading the questions, not reading the names of the person uh, doing the question, and following that, we'll be able to have, therefore, a debate on this very interesting topic of digital marketing. Matthew. Thank you, Joe. Um, they told me to keep it as practical as possible. Um, so I just prepared a couple of slides, not to bore you with them. And then I will jump on the tools that I actually would like to, to introduce you to. Um, so 
this is me in a nutshell. That's my family on the right. Um, during the COVID crisis, actually, we were bored inside and we decided to, to buy some water pistols and drench ourselves in water and keep our two-year-old entertained. On the right, um, this is what I'm involved in. I'm co-founder and director um, of NIU, uh, which is a digital uh, marketing agency, web development agency in, in Malta, uh, and we service clients all around the world. Um, Ice Malta, which is our training arm, we offer courses in digital and also in other IT courses. And the student campus, which is basically um, a VLE LMS system, which we've built, which is also serves some 50,000 um, users across uh, the world. Um, so that's me in a nutshell. Obviously, um, the, this presentation together with my details will be provided um, to you um, after this, this webinar. The topic today is about digital marketing. Um, Joe and his team told me to, as much as possible, give a lot of information about digital. Um, it's so vast that it's very difficult to condense everything in 50 minutes. So what I did was I chose one of the digital channels, which is, in my opinion, one of the most important ones to tackle um, international um, marketing. Um, and I will be dealing technically with that. Um, I will be introducing the topic soon. Just to go a step uh, backward um, before actually introducing the actual topic, I would like to remind you what marketing is all about. Okay? Um, before digital marketing, there was only traditional. By traditional, I mean TV, radio, print, um, I don't know, bus shelters, um, uh, billboards, okay? So that's the traditional marketing, which is still very much in use. And with this presentation, I'm in no way um, telling you that traditional is bad. And see, the best, the best uh, campaigns, even done internationally, are those campaigns which involve both traditional and digital. Um, in fact, um, just before continuing explaining this, I would like to show you a short video um, uh, which, which will basically prove this, okay? So, um, let me show you this video. To get more people to try Coke Zero, we created an entire campaign that they could literally drink. First, we built a billboard that served real Coke Zero to thousands of fans. Then, we poured Coke Zero to people all over the country. Your TV is about to pour you a Coke Zero. This is a drinkable commercial. We partnered with Shazam and created a new way of using their technology. Shazam now to drink it. By Shazamming the spot, the Coke Zero from the screen was poured right into people's phones, whether they were at home, at a concert, or among 80,000 people at the NCAA final game. Every interaction ended with a free Coke Zero that could be redeemed at major retail stores across the U.S. Even when there was no screen, we poured Coke Zero using just sound. from ads that became cups, to flyers that became straws, to tweets that poured Coke Zeros into 140 characters, to drinkable posters that use Shazam to turn people's phones into digital straws. Every single ad put a Coke Zero in people's hands. So next time you're thirsty, drink an ad. Okay, um, so that short video basically showed how traditional marketing and digital worked well in this campaign. Before doing any kind of digital marketing campaign or traditional mar marketing in general, um, you need to keep in mind three things. Okay, the first thing is who your audience is, okay? you need to define the audience. Different people are using different channels, especially online. Um, and so once you know who your audience is, then you can choose what channel is best to use to target those users, okay? Um, on this slide, I illustrated basically the different channels available to us 
um, to target these different audiences. Um, as you all know, there is, for example, social media, um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, okay? Just to mention some few characteristics of these tools. Um, for example, Instagram, we know, um, it's, a, it's a fact now, that uh, there is the younger audience um, on it, which uses it on a day-to-day -day basis, whilst Facebook has an aging population. So if you need to target users which are kind of in their teens, um, Instagram would be better than Facebook, for example. So that is why it's important to identify your audience. Pinterest, there is a statistic that says that 90 plus percent of its users are actually female. So if your audience is totally female based, okay, that is a good place to use and to target um, the female audience. Um, paid search and it's circled basically and, and marked in red is what I will be focusing on today. It's about PPC and we'll be using Google Ads in order to target users on search engines, on Google mainly. So when people search for a particular search term, our advert okay, will come up in the search engine result pages. Email marketing, you all know what email marketing is. Um, the only tricky part with email marketing is that it's not like all the others where you can just wake up in the morning and decide you want to do a campaign uh, targeting people through email uh, because you need a list of emails. You need uh, a list of subscribers that you can actually target. So this is something which can come in at a later stage okay, in your marketing plan. Uh, there's content marketing, which goes hand in hand with SEO. Um, as you know, SEO is how you rank organically in search engines. This takes time, but content will allow you to feature on top of search engines. So having a content strategy, having content written and updated on your site will help you get up there, okay? So that people will actually click on your links and end up on your landing pages and consume the content which you want uh, to, to, to present to them. Then there's also display and video advertising. Um, I'm sure that you use YouTube, I'm sure that you use uh, websites which have banners all around, okay? So that is another way of targeting users by using basically um, what I call the billboards of the internet. Okay, so uh, you create a campaign made up of artwork or video, short videos, um, which are then shown on different websites, okay, um, in front again of your audience, where, audi where the audience can actually consume them, click on them, and land again on your website um, or landing page. Um, and then there's Google Analytics, which I also marked in red. Um, what I will try to do is also show you um, the platform of Google Analytics, whereby um, we can see the results of the campaign, um, of the campaigns that we've actually built and understand what is actually working and what isn't. This is what gives um, a little bit digital a more of an edge uh, than traditional because um, you can actually uh, see exactly how your money is being spent, the number of clicks that you've got, the number of um, leads that you manage to, 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 to get through the campaign. So, so Google Analytics gives us kind of that information in one place, okay, and it connects all the channels and the results for us to be able to analyze and make decisions, okay? Um, so even just to tie this up with internationalization, if we are interested in, uh, I don't know, exporting our products, exporting our services um, in different parts of the world, we can actually create different campaigns and track and see which ones are being consumed better than the others, which one are leading to better results, uh, and tweak the campaigns accordingly. This is the nice thing, again, about digital, whereby we are in control, okay? There is no long-term commitments. You can spend as much as you want, um, and this is something which we can manage on a day-to-day -day basis. So those are the channels. I will focus on PPC and analytics, uh, but before that, um, I want to, to, to point out the, the three I principle, which is basically when you start something um, in digital, okay, so let's say as a company, you've decided to invest in PPC. 
Okay, so you've started building your campaign, you optimized your landing pages, you created um, your, your, your adverts, you, 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 you actually um, identified the best keywords you want to rank with, okay, and you've set up your campaign. You've given it some time to, to, to get um, results from, um, and, and it started. Once you start it, okay, keep on doing it. So the iterate principle. So once you start something and you start getting some sort of results, tweak it, modify it, but keep on doing it. Then integrate it with something else. So if you started PPC and you're doing well with PPC or you're getting some sort of uh, positive feedback from it, then introduce social media, introduce email marketing. Don't try to do everything at one go because it will be obviously harder to manage and harder to track what's working and what isn't. So it's always suggested that you start with one channel or two, whatever you can handle, Iterate, okay, so analyze, see what's working, and then integrate with something else. Okay, so that is basically um, what the tri principle, the three I principle is all about. Um, I would also um, like to show you another short clip. Um, this clip is about how we actually make use of the internet in order to introduce the PPC model, um, which is uh, the pay-per-click um, marketing method online. Uh, so let's sh see th this short uh, clip, um, and I will um, then explain uh, based on this. I think you can relate to this um, video. Um, we are all trying to make the most out of every moment. Okay, so um, are we actually there? Okay, so as a business, are we there? Um, so once we identify um, the audience, okay, we need a way to target whatever we're promoting to that audience. Uh, it's irrelevant if it's locally, okay, or abroad, okay, the, thanks to digital, we can actually decide to target anyone, anywhere, okay, with a simple setup, which I'm going to show you soon. Um, in this um, time I have, I'm going to introduce PPC, basically, which is the paid search advertising. Um, in a nutshell, if I had to explain it, it's very different to what we're used to with traditional, whereby you buy space or you buy, uh, for uh, I don't know, a, bil a billboard for a month or a short 15 seconds, 30 seconds on the radio. Um, this is basically the, the, the approach with PPC is um, where you basically target um, individuals, target an audience, and target also by a search term. So if you want to rank when people type, I don't know, um, uh, IT courses or um, trade Malta and you want to rank on top of Google, um, if your advert shows up and your advert will show up based on the keywords that you've chosen, you are only charged per click. So if 
the audience simply ignored your advert, you are not charged at all. So that is the concept of pay-per-click. It's obviously more elaborate than this, and I will try to, to, get, um, to give you as much as information as I can in the short time I have. Um, so if we had to look at a, at a search engine results page, okay, which is, in short, we call it a SERP, um, it's usually divided in two parts. There is the top part, which is, um, basically for, for your ads, basically for the ads shown with that particular search term. And the bottom part are, are results um, actually shown um, through SEO, what we call the organic results. Now, the way search engines actually work is that before the results are actually shown, there is some sort of algorithm um, a coding mechanism, basically, which identifies the best results to put in front of you, okay? This happens in a few milliseconds. So, basically, as soon as a search term is typed on Google and one hits enter, okay, um, Google will go back to what we call its index. It identifies if there are any adverts related to that particular search term. If there are, it will populate this top part over here. Okay. If there aren't any adverts, the full page will be related to organic results. Now, to rank organically, it's what we call SEO, through SEO. SEO is search engine optimization, whereby you have a website with a number of pages, and you optimize each page for a certain keyword or keywords to rank in search engine results. Now, that is a longish process, so it might take a week, a month, a year, it depends also on the competition um, in, on, on that particular topic. So if we speak, I don't know, about hotels, for example, as you know, there are hundreds of hotels, so if you want to rank when someone types in hotel, um, it's very, very difficult to uh, end up in the first page of Google through organic, um, uh, organic uh, results. But the PPC part, which is the paid part, the one on top, you can actually pay in order to show up in that section. So you actually set up an advert, which, is, which looks like a normal SEO result, but in order for this to appear here, okay, you are simply paying for the click. Okay? Now, the nice thing about it, again, when it comes to internationalization, is that we can decide to whom this advert will be shown. So if we want to target Italians or French, okay, we can actually decide that this advert, this particular advert, is only shown to that particular country or region, whatever. Um, a small stat about this, um, paid results get 30%, 30 to 40% of the clicks within a search engine result page. 70 percent will go to organic, okay? So tell me, ah, Lalo, it's not that effective, you know, to have paid results. It is still effective because 30% of the results of a popular keyword will still drive a ton of traffic to your landing page. And as I said before, organic takes time. In fact, here I've put some comparison between paid and organic, which is what I've been explaining. So this is something which you can read about um, uh, when, when you gain access to this, to this presentation. So my suggestion, if you're tapping into a new country, yes, improve your SEO, make sure you have a decent website which loads quickly, uh, um, which is secure, which is mobile friendly, which is, you know, which ticks a lot of boxes when it comes to SEO. But to get quicker to market, pay per click is the way to go, okay? So do a campaign on Google uh, PPC. Uh, in fact, here, what I've done is I identified the four main uh, kind of uh, considerations when you think if you should do paid versus organic, okay? So, um, you can use paid, uh, paid search to fill gaps. Um, let's say, for example, our company website ranks really well and it's doing well through SEO, but we've just introduced a new course about, I don't know, GDPR, for example. Um, since it's a new course, okay, it's very difficult for that particular course to rank immediately um, in Google through SEO. So in order to fill that gap, we do a campaign, a PPC campaign, just for the, that course. For the other courses, we don't need to because we already rank well through organic. So in that uh, instant, okay, we are still ranking first, but through the PPC. 
Um, obviously, with, with, with paid, you are increasing your visibility. We have companies, for example, that still rank really well through organic, but also want to take this spot of PPC because they don't want that other competitors actually uh, do PPC campaigns uh, to, ha to actually take 30% of the clicks. So they prepare to get the 100%, okay? Um, with paid, you can also um, identify and, and target specific devices. So if you have, I don't know, you've just launched an app, for example, which works only on iPhone, uh, iOS. Um, in that case, your PPC campaign can be targeted solely to users using an iPhone and not waste any traffic, any, any clicks, any money um, to other users which, are, which cannot get access to your app. So that is another way of, of using paid, paid, paid search. And obviously, one of the most important things which I'm stressing about, given it's about internationalization, is quick access to markets. Okay, so the, 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 with PPC, literally, we can set up a campaign in minutes. I will, I will actually be showing you how uh, in a few minutes. And, and the campaign, as soon as it, has, as, as it is approved, um, your adverts will actually start showing in front of the audience you're interested in um, without any delays, without any waiting time at all. Um, these are the PPC elements which you need to kind of prepare prior doing a campaign. Okay, so um, there is a lot of common, uh, common things between when you're doing SEO and PPC. In fact, keyword research keyword research and landing pages are also two elements which are required for the SEO exercises that you might uh, have done for your website. So uh, what is this about? Basically, before you actually decide that you want to rank on Google, obviously you need to identify a set of keywords. You cannot just rank first on Google for every keyword that exists. So my suggestion would be that you identify 10 to 15 keywords um, that you want to optimize your website for. So those keywords are basically being used to optimize content on your website, which also will help you rank better through SEO. Those same keywords, you can then use them to fill the gap, to get quick access to market through PPC. So until the SEO is working and Google is identifying what you've done, you are still ranking through PPC. Ideally, yes, you use the same keywords you are optimizing your website for, both for SEO and PPC. It doesn't make sense that your website is optimized for water, but you're selling Coke, okay? So, so it's important that um, what you're optimizing for, you want to rank for in both SEO and PPC. The landing pages part is obviously important because, um, as you know, when people click on a search engine result, you are taken to a landing page. The worst landing page you can take your users is the home page, believe it or not. Um, I've seen even locally and even foreign campaigns um, creating PPC, uh, which are generic, which take the users to the home page. Let me give you an example. If I'm looking for, I don't know, uh, PlayStation, the new PlayStation is coming up, uh, coming out, um, and I type PlayStation 5 as a keyword. If I get a result, which shows in the title that it's a PlayStation 5, um, the information about it, and I'm interested, and I click on it. Instead of seeing the PlayStation 5 on the landing page, I am in the home page where there's a mix of laptops and mobiles and maybe a small section about PlayStation 5. For me, that is not an optimized landing page, and people might actually what we call bounce, okay? So people might actually come in your site, they are interested in PlayStation 5, they see everything except PlayStation 5 and end up clicking back and doing their search again. So landing pages are extremely important for your PPC campaigns, also for SEO, but for PPC, mega important. Why? Because if I'm searching for PlayStation 5, just to with the same example, I want to see PlayStation 5. In fact, Google remained the top search engine because the results it gives, it's usually what we're searching for. So if you're searching for PlayStation 5, you want a PlayStation 5. So I want to stress this, and it's important that your campaigns are designed in a way that the advert takes you to the most relevant results, okay? Um, 
In PPC, apart from keywords and landing pages, we also need to work on the copy of the ads. Okay, there is no artwork, there is no complications about it. You just need to prepare the text, what will show basically in relation to the keywords you want to rank with. Again, don't keep these generic. If I am searching, just to keep with the same example, for PlayStation 5, the advert needs to refer to PlayStation 5. Okay, so let's, 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 let me show you basically how this is done. Okay, so I will uh, switch basically from the presentation and actually show you Google Ads, um, Google Ads um, setup and we'll create a simple campaign in the little amount of time that we have together. Okay, so uh, I'm not sure if you can see my screen. Okay, all right, so uh, before you actually start doing a PPC campaign, you need a Google Ads account. In order to open an, a Google Ads account, all you require is a Google email, a Gmail account or a Google business account, okay? Um, now, this is like a, a, a cooking show, so I'm not going to show you how to actually create the account, but it's pretty much simple, okay? You hit the Start Now button and you follow the steps one after the other. Um, uh, so, like a cooking show, you know that they, from under the table, they get the cake. Um, I created the account before this webinar, and I'm now in the account, okay? So, this is what the last screen will be, okay? So, once the process is created, um, uh, you'll end up in a screen similar to this one. Um, so this is an empty Google Ads account. Um, I created it specifically for this for this webinar, just to show you how, how it looks like. Um, so over here, you can actually start your campaign. But before I would start a campaign, I would have done already my landing page and my keyword research. To do those two, I'm going to show you what tools I use. Obviously, for the landing page, you need to get, I don't know, a designer, a developer um, to, to, to help you create a landing page. Or if you are using some sort of CMS like WordPress, Wix, whatever, you can actually build your own landing page. It's important that you build as many landing pages as possible for the keywords to match your landing page. Okay, so if you're selling three products, three distinct products, make sure you have three landing pages if you want to promote them um, on, on PPC. Um, in our case, what I'm going to, to do um, is I'm going to use our website as an example for, for a landing page. But before I'm, I'm going to show you the landing page, I would like to start by showing you the keyword research. And for keyword research, usually I use three tools, which are Google Trends, Google Keyword Planner, and Google Analytics. Okay, so those are the three tools. Let me just show you Google Trends quickly. So this is a a small tool created by Google, whereby it's a database of all the searches done on Google. It's a very simple tool. Um, they created this in, actually in 2004. In fact, the data doesn't go more back than 2004. Um, and the way it works is, is, is very simple. What I'm going to do in order to illustrate how it works, I'm going to give you an example. So um, a couple of years ago, I think it was two years ago, um, just before Christmas, we were planning a Christmas campaign for one of our clients. And this, um, and this um, company requested that we do keyword research uh, for them in order to basically then uh, put up a Christmas campaign uh, to sell their products on Line. Um, the first step was to meet with the, with the managers, with the people involved, and ask them a couple of questions, That's just to put me in the right track, okay? And I asked them what, I mean, the first question I asked, what is basically uh, the most uh, popular items, that, what are the most popular items that you sell during Christmas? And after a little bit of discussion, it, it resulted that it's usually the cheaper version of each product. So if it's, I don't know, they sell laptops, it would be the cheaper models of the laptops. If they sell phones, it would be the cheaper models of the phones. So that was kind of my first, uh, my first uh, task, to go into, for example, Google Trends and start putting in keywords, like for example, I don't know, cheap laptops, okay? Just to get an idea of how uh, these keywords were being used. And not to my surprise, but actually they were right, because as you can see, the spikes here that you can see are actually in November and December. So every year in November and December, people were actually searching for cheap laptops. What I also noticed though, that cheap laptops, although even closer to when I was planning this campaign, was still very popular during November and December. It is kind of spiraling down. Um, so uh, I asked another question to my, to my client, Isma, are you still uh, selling the cheaper version of, of, of each product or are people spending more maybe? Or 
Uh, but with Omen, no, no, it's, they are still buying, buying our cheaper uh, versions. So uh, I had to find the keywords which were actually being used instead of cheap laptops. And after using Google Keyword Planner, which is another tool I will show you soon, and their analytics account, which obviously um, provides data uh, from searches that end up on their website, I managed to find the, the keyword I was looking for, which was actually laptop deals. Okay, so if we plot laptop deals together with cheap laptops, we can see that um, laptop deals was actually still peaking in November and December, um, and it was overtaking basically the cheap laptops keyword. So uh, basically what we've done, the campaign that we had to plan, uh, we revolted it around this particular keyword, which is the deals keyword. Okay, so this is just to give you an idea. So over here, um, on this, on this uh, Google Trends, we can, we can actually compare keywords and see how people are actually using them. Um, yes, you can use Malta instead of worldwide, but the numbers obviously are much, much smaller. So I prefer to use uh, the worldwide, um, worldwide filter rather than Malta. Um, but we're influenced technically by, by anywhere. If you're obviously doing internationalization exercises, my suggestion, if the country is obviously bigger than Malta, which is technically everywhere is bigger than and Malta, um, you can actually find the country you're interested in and check that keyword, um, uh, check, check the, those keywords um, th through the tool. Okay, so that is Google Trends. I suggest that you uh, dive into it after, after the webinar to get an idea of what it can do for you. Um, another tool I mentioned is the Keyword Planner. Keyword Planner is accessible via the Google Ads platform. So if I go to search over here and I type in Keyword Planner, okay, I can actually then uh, use two distinct tools. I can discover new keywords, so I can give the keywords that I think might make sense for my business to promote my service or product. And then Google will give me results with synonyms with other keywords related to those keywords which I've put in. And also, after using this tool, I can then identify the volumes and forecasts for that particular key keyword across time. So if I have those 10 keywords, I can actually plot them and see how much I should spend to meet my KPIs, to meet whatever goals I have set for my campaign. So let's click on the first one here. So over here, for example, I can actually type in, I don't know, like uh, cheap laptops, just to keep with the same example, um, laptop deals. Um, we can also put brands like Dell, laptop, um, Apple, laptop, okay? just to get some, some information from, from this tool. Okay, and I hit the get results. So what Google is doing now, okay, by the way, I didn't change the location from Malta, I left the language as English, and I left the search network as Google. This is all customizable, so any keyword which you are doing research for needs to be researched based on the location that you want to target. So if you're targeting Italy here, ideally, you switch it to Italy to get the results from that region. Okay, um, even the language, uh, I mean, remember Italians might search for your service, for your product in Italian. So the keywords might make more sense if they are in Italian. Okay, so it's important to keep these things in mind, especially when doing international campaigns. Um, so over here, what basically results I have uh, from Google is that from these, lap from these um, keywords that I've put in, um, uh, Google suggested other keywords related which might make sense to use in my campaign. Okay, so these are keywords which I can use in, in, in my campaign, right? Obviously, my suggestion would be that you don't just copy them all and paste them all in your campaign. Um, analyze the results, okay? See if, the, if they are being searched for a number of times, more than others. Uh, look at also the cost per click to get an idea of how much you need to spend for uh, ranking with that particular keyword, um, and then identify the best ones and use them in your campaign. My suggestion is to keep it to 15 to 20 keywords. Why? Because if you do more and the budget is limited, you'll just get one click on one keyword, two clicks on another, so it would be very difficult for you to identify those keywords which are actually great and those keywords which are not. Okay, so, so this is kind of um, important uh, for you um, to keep in mind. Okay, so let's say we've managed to come up with these 15 keywords, 10 keywords. Okay, the next step would be um, to, to, to make sure that the landing page is in place. Okay, now just 
for an exam for this example um, um, I'm, I'm using one of our courses as a landing page so this would be the landing page when people type in I don't know digital marketing course for example so this landing page will be used by the keywords okay by the keywords that are related to this uh, particular course so in order to create a campaign um, let me show you quickly um, all you need to do um, okay just go back to my test account for a second uh, I'm going to hit new campaign and I'm going to create a campaign to drive traffic to my site using PPC search PPC paid search okay these all refer to the same thing so I'm going to click search the goal is to get people to this site so I'm going to copy my URL and paste it over here okay continue and this is basically there is a four step approach uh, oh, sorry for that um, th there is a four step approach to create a campaign okay so the first thing is to create a campaign name uh, trade multi webinar test okay now it's important that you open any settings that are hidden by Google okay so over here actually there is an important setting which is the start date and then date of your campaign so over here my suggestion would be that uh, if it's your first campaign to to actually set an end date okay because by default um, all campaigns done on Google Ads are actually without an end date so over here uh, it's important to set up I don't know uh, a month uh, campaign for example um, over here we can choose the locations that we're interested uh, to target okay so um, again my suggestion is to create a campaign per location why so that you can uh, identify the results and monitor the campaign separately so if you are interested I don't know in Italy and Germany you create a campaign for Italy and another campaign for Germany so even if one is doing better than the other you can adjust the budgets you can pause uh, one of them you can increase the budget of the other one without you know a lot of uh, messy settings so keep them as separate as possible uh, so over here we can actually um, enter the location like for example if you go to advanced search here actually it will give you also some more information like for example if I type Italy just to mention Italy uh, with with PPC we can reach 45 uh, million nearly 46 million people we can also target the whole Italy or we can also for example exclude I don't know exclude Rome for example so so we can actually target uh, the whole thing and then exclude part of it okay so once you set up your locations in this case I'm going to leave it as as Malta um, you can actually set up your budget so again here budgets I, I usually get a lot of questions how much should I spend daily how much should I spend per click experiment okay there is no clean rule on how much you should spend my suggestion always start slow even if you have a budget of 1000 euro daily for a month I wouldn't start spending 1000 euro daily I would start spending hundreds to get the gist to understand how how the campaign is working then increase it at the end okay um, so remember the world is big and you have all the time in the world to actually target these uh, these new markets so start small identify uh, what's working and what's not working and then increase and adjust your budget okay um, since it's pay per click we're obviously paying for the click and Google can actually either decide on its own so we can actually let Google decide and he'll take care of how much uh, we spend for every click or else we can actually set up a maximum cost per click my suggestion uh, if the market you're targeting is actually new um, is to actually set up a maximum cost per click so that you don't allow Google to spend how much he wants okay so again start it as small as can be and then increase it as time goes by so in this case I'm going to uh, type in 10 cents per click um, and that's that's pretty much it the next step would be to actually create the list of keywords okay so over here we can create ad groups okay and we can actually list uh, keywords which are interesting uh, to the users when they are searching on on Google to end up on the landing page which I uh, which I chose as you can see Google by default will actually skin scrape the website and identify what that page is about and creates an ad group 
which is basically this one, uh, with a number of keywords which might make sense um, as search results uh, for, for, for people on, on searching, searching online. Um, if we had done the exercise before and we have our keywords, obviously we can add more keywords to this list and remove whatever um, Google suggested. So this is basically the second step, identify your keywords. You can have multiple ad groups per campaign. Okay, so in this case, for example, we created one ad group for digital marketing, digital marketing course. But if we want to target um, another landing page, target another course, for example, we can create multiple ad groups. So we can create another course, like, I don't know, uh, course two. Here we put another um, landing page and another set of keywords. Okay? Ideally, you keep them separate, okay? Remember, the, the, more, the less generic the landing page is, the better the results you'll get, okay? Uh, in this case, I'm going to leave it simple with one ad group, save and continue. And the third step is actually to create the ads, okay? So this is what people will see when they type the keywords that you've identified in front of them, okay? So the link is already set because we set it in the beginning of the, um, of the setup of the campaign. Over here, you need to set up the header, I don't know, like digital marketing course online. Uh, oop. When it comes red, Okay, it means that we've um, uh, gone over the limit. As you can see, every single item here has a limit. For example, the headings have a limit of 30 um, characters. Um, so it's important that you don't go over them, okay? Um, because uh, the advert wouldn't run, uh, the campaign would, wouldn't actually run. Okay, so here you write more text, text here, whatever. Okay, and as you can see on the on the um, on the right here, the advert is being is being built. More text here, some cool description goes here, and more description. The chunkier the advert is, the more real estate you'll be taking from the Google search engine result page. So my suggestion is to make the most out of the limits, okay? What I usually do prior coming to the screen, I would have already set up the adverts, the ad copy on an Excel sheet, um, and then I just copy and paste, even to avoid mistakes, to avoid spell, spelling mistakes, um, and to make the most out of the available, um, available um, uh, real estate, basically. Uh, so once you've, you're done, obviously you can save and continue, or you can actually create more ads for that same ad group, okay? So let's say we'll keep it simple, we'll save it with one advert, Remember that whatever we're doing in this process can actually be modified after, okay? So uh, we're just at the setup stage here. So over here, um, it identified some issues because uh, I use some generic text, uh, but I'm still going to, to publish it just to um, explain to you um, how, how, how it will look like when, when published. So here we've got the campaign uh, in 10 minutes. Uh, we, we've managed to, to do it quickly, um, but uh, the campaign is actually ready uh, to, to, start, to start showing. So over here now, as you can see, it's no longer an empty screen. We've got the keywords uh, which, we've we, we, which we've identified. Eventually, when they start being um, shown, the adverts uh, will start getting uh, data in this in this screen here um, and obviously the campaign can be motivated at any time so if instead of 10 euro a day you would like to start spending 100 simply updating the budget here will increase your your budget uh, going forward you can also enable or disable campaigns at any time so if i don't know there's uh, there's an issue with your campaign or you want to do some tweaks before continuing it you can always pause it so this is stuff which you can actually manage uh, throughout this is not something which you published and then you forget about it and this, my suggestion would be to, to look at these results and see exactly what's working and what, what's not working. Just quickly, quickly, um, analytics can be connected to Google Ads and the results which you obtain from your PPC campaigns can actually be integrated with, with Google Analytics. Um, there is a section in Google Analytics which is called acquisition, which also has the Google Ads um, report over here. So once they are connected together, okay, all the results which you get from your PPC campaign can actually be seen over here. And the nice thing about it, if someone actually clicked on your advert, 
ended up on your landing page and then ended up buying the course, for example, you can see the full trail over here. So over here, for example, we can see that this Google Ads campaign resulted in 461 clicks, which costed us $165, which resulted into 443 in sales since this website is e-commerce. Uh, so I think that's uh, it. I don't have enough more time. Uh, Joe, I'm not sure if there are any questions. Yes, yes there are, there are uh, questions uh, indeed. Matthew, this is really, really interesting. I mean, you, you, you know, people like us trained in you know, international business and marketing, you get, to you get to realize, I guess, that a lot has to be you know, unlearned nowadays because yeah. these are new tools. Uh, but, but they obviously follow the same you know, basics of, uh, of what we're used to in terms of marketing and in terms of you know, using technology for these things. We have a number of questions. I want to start with a generic one, um, Matthew, please. Uh, this is, you know, I, I enjoyed you know, watching you taking us through the whole thing because in a way it's very technical, but all the interfaces you were, you were um, uh, showing us were you know, user friendly. D uh, does a person you know, who's in charge of digital marketing within a company you know, need to be technical and how technical? Uh, that's a good question. In fact, um, uh, we work with a number of companies, as you know, Joe, um, and we have a mix of, 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 of results. But yes, I mean, the tools have become so easy to use um, that, that marketing people can actually um, even learn uh, how to use them and do stuff themselves. We have companies which actually outsource this work, for example, to us, but they are still involved in the day-to-day -day management. So uh, what we usually do for them is guide them to setting up, for example, the first campaign or two, um, and then they can easily take over. Um, but yes, I mean, the tools are what you've, you, what you've seen during this, this, this short webinar. Another interesting question we have is, and again, because Trade Malta typically helps companies do more business to business, uh, you yes. know, transactions and business to business lead generation as against business to consumer. Uh, is digital marketing having an impact on business to business as well, or is it predominantly business to consumer? No, it's, a, it's, it's both, actually. So, um, uh, I mean, business to consumer, is, it's, it's easier to track and there is the volume. But technically, yes, there, is, there are a lot of businesses which um, offer services to, um, to other businesses which are using tools like PPC, uh, which are um, enhancing their website with content to rank organically, even, for example, translating the content um, so that when users from around the world search for stuff in their language, um, their website actually pops up. Uh, so, so yes, I mean, business to business is quite active uh, online uh, more than ever now. An interesting question we have from a participant is, you know, to do this properly, do I need to redesign my website or do I start from the website and content which the company has already and kind of we do digital marketing around it? Um, yes, that's another very, very good question. Um, Google, um, for example, let, let's focus on PPC because digital marketing, as you know, is, is quite generic. But if you look at PPC, PPC, um, one of the things which, which Google actually looks at is the website, the actual landing page. If the landing page is not up to standard, basically, um, you'll end up spending more um, on your marketing in order to rank in, in Google through PPC. So my suggestion um, is to, yes, look into your website, make sure that all the SEO practices are in place, that the website is fast, it's mobile friendly, it's secure using HTTPS, um, it doesn't take three minutes to load, but less than three seconds. Um, there are tools online which you can use, um, like, I don't know, Pingdom, for example, GT Metrics, uh, which can identify problems in your site. But yes, ideally, before you actually tap into PPC on any other um, uh, digital marketing, which will end up um, with users accessing your site, make sure that your site is up to speed, basically. We have another one from a participant. I'm, hope, I, I'm hoping I'm going to be translating it well okay. for you. But my question is, with regards to the landing page for PPC, should landing pages be always within the main domain of the website, or it doesn't matter? And he's giving you know, examples here you know, with a relatively long kind of domain name. Does it have to be pointing towards the same domain name, or can a landing page be of a you know, different okay. domain name? That's, that's kind of, of a marketing strategy. 
Okay, so um, if, for example, I don't want to show that, um, let's take the example of Ice Malta, that I want to, uh, to do a course in Italy, for example, and I don't want to show that I, I want to do this course to the rest of the people that access my site, um, my suggestion there, yes, that, that you'll do it on a separate subdomain or a separate domain and simply use that to, to get results from a campaign. Um, in the case of, I don't know, where you want people to buy stuff from your store, you have an e-commerce store, for example, like the example I gave previously of PlayStation 5. Um, in that case, PlayStation 5 landing page can be simply the product page and you can have it as part of the site. Uh, why? Because when a, a user is on, on your site um, and it's e-commerce, they can actually end up buying something else instead of what they search for. So uh, if it's a standalone thing, you know, they can only see that particular product. So it depends. There is no, again, rule on how, uh, if it's a standalone or part of the site, Joe. But it can be both. It can be both, yes, 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 yes. We have also a, a, a bold and ambitious question here. Okay. Uh, what's the best way to have a product that goes viral? <laughs> Everyone wants to go viral, Joe. Um, uh, uh, I mean, it depends. It depends on what the product is, again, what the target audience is. Um, going viral is not simple. Okay, um, uh, so, so yes, there is a lot of planning, um, a lot of things that need to be done and not just a quick setup like I showed you. Uh, you need to be prepared even for the virality of things, okay? So you need to be prepared to answer questions, you need to be prepared, uh, so if you go viral that your server, for example, hosting the website can actually hold up. Um, so, so, I mean, no, there is, there, it's not a quick question, question to answer this, Joe. So I guess, I guess it depends. <laughs> Uh, to, a, uh, to a large degree on the product itself, uh, yeah, of course, of course makes, because digital makes marketing a lot of difference. can never, I guess, you know, yeah. fix a, a product which is not, which is not. Exactly. Not Another participant is asking how to check SEO is against PPC. Um, uh, how to check how effective is the CEO to implement, um, and is PPC therefore complementary to SEO, so activities would be more profitable. Okay, that's a good question. I'm not sure if I can actually show answer this um, answer this uh, question by showing on screen. Yes. Okay. Very good. So, in the acquisition section of your analytics, obviously, make sure that you have analytics installed on your site because um, all this data is crucial um, to monitor uh, your campaigns and your SEO. So, over here, for example, on this particular site, um, we can see the different channels. Uh, which are basically sending people to our site. Now, over here, for example, the first one, the organic search, is result, basically direct result from SEO. So over here we can see that from those 13,000 that visited our website during this period, uh, nearly half of them came through organic. Um, the, the, the PPC part is this part over here. So we can see them separately and we can I, I, um, isolate them kind of and monitor, monitor them separately. Now you tell me, Lalu, here SEO is more important than paid search. No, that, that's not the result uh, that you get from here. Over here you can see that uh, organic, your website is ranking organically, but also your paid campaign is giving you results. In fact, if you can see here the transaction section, this is an e-commerce site. Um, although we've got 6,000 people nearly coming from organic, we still had less transactions, e-commerce conversion, than the 300 we got through paid search. So we can see that, we can say that um, paid search is being more effective here than, than organic. Um, just to answer also a little bit uh, the, the, the user's question, um, PPC doesn't affect your SEO, okay? So that is a myth, a misconception, okay? Um, whatever, obviously, you do for SEO, you'll find ready for PPC, like the keyword research and the landing page, but they are not directly related. Um, what's interesting from, from what you're showing us in here is that um, and, I, and I guess it has to be a bit like this. There is a degree of, you know, some of the digital marketing uh, activities which you, you know, delegate to an agency like yours and others, but I guess a lot of companies need to have people internally who are trained to be able to take this forward, you know, on an ongoing basis. Um, and so, so digital marketing, sk the skill itself becomes important, I guess. 
Yes, it is very much so. Um, I mean, as I Smolta, we've been training hundreds of people a year now um, on, on digital marketing. Um, I also encourage users to keep on learning. This is not something you learn uh, now and, you know, just it's like a degree, you know, you get it once and mm -hmm. it's there forever. Um, things are it's continuously changing, you, you know, so you need to be... you fine tune exactly. as you go along. Yes. I'm yes. using this mostly to drop in an advert for Trade Malta because, as I said in the beginning, we are uh, supporting yeah. financially companies who in that invest uh, in their people and in the digital skills, the digital marketing skills of their staff. So in our, you know, um, uh, COVID um, emergency assist response uh, scheme, we assist companies both actually executing um, uh, digital marketing campaigns and also sending people for training in digital marketing in the kind of activities we're discussing with Matthew today. Yes, in fact, I, I also would like to, to, to offer something to our viewers, basically. Um, we are partners with the Digital Marketing Institute um, and those of you that are interested to learn more about digital, uh, we are giving away basically three months membership on, on, on the uh, e-learning platform uh, whereby you have access to short notes, to sorry, short courses, similar to, to what I've been explaining here, course snippets and also a library of resources which is continuously updated. Uh, those of you that are interested can follow the link um, on, on the screen um, and, and we'll send you access to, these, uh, to, the, to, the, to this portal basically. That's really, really, really great, Matthew. In the meantime, however, we have more questions coming in. I'm reading one of them. What yeah. if you do not sell from the website? It's not an e-commerce enabled website um, and it's just a showcase. Can you track messages sent by the users, for example? Yes, that can be done actually. Uh, I'm not sure if I can again share the screen so that I can show you quickly how. Okay, so basically um, e-commerce, it's, it's easier to track because you have um, a conversion done from start to finish. With uh, a normal website which doesn't involve payments, okay, you can still uh, monitor goals, we call them, okay? So from the admin section, um, of Google Analytics, you can set up goals. Goals can be anything, okay? They can be playing of a video, for example. They can be submission of a form, subscription to a newsletter, downloading of a PDF. So anything you want to track, you set up as a goal, okay? Um, so um, I'm sure that you can Google how to set up a goal, and it's very easy to actually follow the steps and set it up. But yes, um, um, even if you don't have e-commerce on your site, this is something which, which you can track. Fantastic, thanks Matt. Another question is on the debate we started before on business to business is against business to consumer. We have a participant asking, can one target specific geographical areas or clusters within Malta? Um, mm. What she has in mind, I guess, and, and, and it's written here, if you want to target businesses, for example, in Gozo. I know that this is a, an internationalization yep. uh, session, but you know, I guess go to Malta, we can allow that. Yes, it's a, it's a good question. Unfortunately, with Google Ads, you cannot. Um, you can actually use Facebook marketing and Instagram marketing and target speci specific locations. Uh, but with Google Ads, since it uses IPs basically to target users, it's a, an IP-based approach. Um, IPs in Malta are not locality-based. Um, so no, you cannot target just Gozo with PPC. But since Malta and Gozo technically, it's, it's, it's very small. Um, if you identify the right keywords, technically if he's in Malta or in Gozo, you shouldn't care that much. Great. Are there any other you know, final you know, words uh, that you maybe haven't you know, tackled in the presentation you'd like to leave us with? Um, no, I mean, don't be afraid of using these tools. Uh, my suggestion is to actually get your hands dirty. Uh, start with a very small budget, okay, test it out. You don't have to spend a lot and you'll immediately start seeing results. Make sure that you have Google Analytics integrated so that you can monitor um, exactly what's happening throughout your campaign. So, yep. Matthew, this has been really you know, interesting and insightful. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to you know, wrap it up here. I just remind participants that next week we have a very interesting uh, set up with uh, representatives of stakeholders from Namibia, the sub-Saharan African uh, country with a lot of prospects for you know, Malta-based companies, potentially. So we look forward to that. And then the week after that, the last one before we break off for the summer recess um, from HSBC on supply chain and uh, financing options. I'd like to thank my colleagues at Trade Malta, Richard, who leads this um, project, and Josie and Vella, who takes care of the website, because we put all this stuff on uh, trademalta.org following the session 
of today. Finally, of course, thanks to Studio 7 for making the technology possible for us to be able to broadcast and to our partners, HSBC. So with that, um, we'll see you and be with you next week for the session on Namibia. Thank you very much.